Okay, now we're going to move on to another section and just a, another section but a different style. We're going to put some um, circles along here um, with icons on and underneath a little bit of text in this section. So we'll start off by drawing out um, some ellipse shapes. So I go to the shapes, keep my finger on the mouse and go to the ellipse tool. Now I want to make it the same color um, orange that I have been using so far. A number of ways I can do that is I can go and get the eyedropper and get the eyedropper and we've got the color here. Again, I'll just select the circle. Now I'm gonna make this um, a certain size. So I'm gonna go for 191 pixels. So once you've got the shape tool, I can just basically click and it'll come up. Now what I can do is I can just type in the um, 191 and 191 and that will do it proportionally. And then I just click and it'll make my circle to those dimensions. So I'd have to drag it out or do anything like that. And again, using the um, guides, I will sort of drag it over until I get it into the position I want to get it in. And probably if I zoom in a little bit more on here, and then I move this over and get it into my position uh, using the guides. Right, now once, you, once I've got that, you'll notice it doesn't have a stroke on. If you do have anything to do with a stroke on, um, up there you need to probably take it off so it's got no stroke. And also when you're using um, shape properties now in um, Photoshop CC, you can have the properties up here. If you don't have them out, you need to go to the window menu and bring it out with properties. You might find that sometimes your properties is blank. That sometimes happens. And if that's the case, you go for the black arrow head and click on the shape and your property should spring back to life. I think it might be a glitch in some versions, but that's how you would um, sort of get it to come back. Now, once I've got that, I will now duplicate it. I'll just drag my layers so they're over here out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna press Alt and Shift on the keyboard and then I'm gonna click and drag and drag it across here and it's a constrain it to its proportions and I'm going to go right across here and hopefully it should um, mate up on the center here, which you can see it's got the smart guides and that's coming up for 84% um, there. We can rearrange it a little bit better later on. And again, I would press Alt and Shift on that one and drag that out again, moving it across here and aligning it up um, to the positions here. And again, make sure we've got those and make sure they're aligning up. Okay, go back here and make sure we got those. Right, so we've got our objects on there and if I shift click them, um, what it can do is we can have them um, sort of more that centered up in there and get, the, get them to be right and then we can move them along. I basically get them centered, um, they should be all together. If I drag it down, you should see that it's probably got them centered. I'll just take that away. Right, now once we've done that and set that up, um, we've got all our shapes in there. Now if we look in here in our layers, you'll see it's got ellipse and it's got three of them. I'll just make it a little bit more meaningful. All I'll do is I'll uh, rename them and probably rename them as they are. So it's got, this one can be my, third one this can be my second one and this is the first one and all I'll do is I'll just reorder them that that might be just helpful so you know which ones are in order um, sort of going down it might help you find things now what I need to do is I just shift click these and I'm going to go up to the options up here and I'm going to say new group from layers and once I've got that I will just name it now different things you're going to name it I'm just going to call it hand uh, plane section and the reason I'm going to call it that is it's going to have a hand and a plane icon in it but you probably name it more some more meaningful you can name it with um, semantic session um, sections do it article or um, sections if, if you wish but we identified that and that means that's all the grouped down here all those shapes now make sure I've got that selected and I'm going to add in some icons so first up, I'll just make sure I just click away from there to deselect those items. I go down to the shapes and I go to custom shape. 
first of all, I'm going to go from a plane. So if I go up here, if you don't have all your shapes in Photoshop, you go here and go all and click OK. And it should add all your shapes so you can actually see all your shapes in there. Now, the first one I'm going to do, I'll click on the plane. I've got that and I can just click on there and it comes up with 100 and I bring it in and it's put it on here. Now you'll see the shape is put it right up on the top here. So I'll just bring it down and put it into my section. And also it's the same color um, as the fill we just used. So if I click up here, either here, bring it up and I'll just make that white to be a little bit bigger. Um, I'll just sort of drag that out, make it a little bit bigger and move it around and put it in the position I want it to be. Okay. Now, once I've done that, I'm just going to call that shape over here. I'll press uh, enter or return to commit to that. I'll just call that plane. So always remember you name all your objects. Now, after that, next one I'm going to drag out. If I go to the, I'll uh, just click away from there. I click on the shape. Again, I'm going to get this recycle um, image that I'm going to bring in. Okay, I go down and click on the recycle and then I'll just click here again. I'll just do it at 100 comes over here bring it. I'll just change its color um, Once I click up here click back on the shape tool. I'll just change the color up here I make sure it's actually in the folder where I want it to be and I'll just drag it into position um, Where I want it to be and put it on there now once I've got that again I will go to the shapes and I'll call it re recycle. Now you can call them recycle icon, which I think I'll probably do to differentiate between anything else and go back here and call this um, recycle, I'll call this plain icon. So we've got that. And then lastly, I'll just go back here and I'll switch to the default settings up here and I'll change the foreground color to white. And once I've done that by clicking on it, I will go back to my shapes again and go up here. And this time I'm going to put the hand icon on. So I'll just click on here. And again, I'll click over here somewhere. Click that. Here's my hand. Now you can see because we changed the foreground color to white, it's here. Now I'm going to bring this up because it's put it down there. So make sure it's in the right folder. I'll put it over here somewhere, make sure I sort of get it right. You'll see the smart objects will help you uh, put it in. It's a bit of a regular object, so it's very difficult to get to centered quite easily. And I'll just call this hand um, icon, and that will identify it as that object. So I've done all those, and I've placed them all in there, and they're all in that folder. Now, once that's done, I need to put some titles underneath. So I'll just click away to get rid of my selection. I will then um, well, I put some text underneath. Now, before I do that, I'll just go back over here. And what I can do is shift click all these items in here and I can group them. You could put them in another folder, but I'll just link them together. So go to the options. And what I will do is I will just link those layers. Now, once they're linked, we can then move them up um, in different positions and they'll move as one item. All right. So once I've got that um, on top of here, I've got the top layer, I'm going to put in some text. So I click in T for text. Now you probably might want to select a, an appropriate prop font for your project. Um, so if you just go and get um, a font that you want, and this time I'm going to have uh, the text in orange. So the same orange. So I use the pipette or eyedropper to do that get back with my text. Now this time with my text, I'm going to make it uh, just 24, 25 points. But again, you work out your size and style sheet, you can always scale it uh, later on. I click here and I'll just type in a hand as a title. And once I've got that, I can then just move over here, make sure I get it centered. And what I can do is just after here, I'll just click the Press return. This time I'll just leave it on the same size but make it white by the color picker up here. And this time I'm going to type in very handy ind 
indeed. That's for just going to be uh, the title on that. So I'll move that over. And what I need to do is center it. I think I should have put it in black. Oops. So I'll just go back here. Should have been black. Sorry. Do that. And once I've got that, I'm going to center it. So I can center it up here. You can get your options up here for um, characters and everything, which will bring over here which you can change for paragraphs and changing that around. Now, once I've got that, I'll just make sure I sort of center it again and get it to the place I want it to be. There it is. And all I'll do is, as before, I'll um, press Alt and Shift, then, then I'll click, and then I'll just move it over to here. And then, again, with the Alt and Shift, hold down, click, and move it over uh, to here. Now, once I've got those um, in situation, I can then just go back and change them so they're a little bit more meaningful. And I'll just pipe in recycle and just put a little subheading. Uh, pipe in, it is a good thing in here. Again, I might need to rearrange that because it's moved along there and you can set it up with the smart guides. And then finally, on this one, I just need to change that around and I'll call it, um, let's call it a plane. Oops. A plane. And then underneath here, I'll put fly for away. Whatever you put in, you can put Latin body text, it's up to you, but sometimes with titles, you need to do something a little bit more meaningful um, to set those up. Right, now what we have done is we put all those in there, so they're all set up, and we need to make sure they're all in the um, right section here, so that's good, it's in the plain section. Right, now once those are set up, um, I'm going to just put some text underneath, so I'm going to put in some, um, just a title going across, and then I'm going to have um, a little bit of a paragraph underneath. So first of all, I'll just click here and I'll drag out a um, paragraph text box. Now I'll leave the same font, but what I will do is to make it um, regular, so it'll be a bit thicker. And then I will just make sure it, it's sort of black. And then finally, I'll do the font size with this one and this one. I'll just make it a little bit bigger, make it 26. Right. Now, what I can do, um, having clicked in there, I can go up to the type menu and I can do Pace, Lorem, Epsom, and I'll put it in there. So it's just put in some text. It'll probably flow out of here a little bit too much on the box, but it doesn't really matter because this is only for mock-up. And I've dragged it right across here um, with the uh, column structures. I can press um, command and semicolon to turn my um, columns um, back on um, to check everything's all fine. Um, once I'm happy with that, I can click up here and you'll see it's all centered as well because I've centered the text. Okay, now um, once I've got that, I'm going to get another text box. I'll click away first, T for text. And again, using the guides, I drag along the, just make it a little bit higher. Um, this time, I'll just go and change the um, point size to 18, and I'll change from regular, and I'll just go back and do light, and now once I've set that up, I go to the type menu, and paste in lorem ipsum, and that'll just type in, uh, put in some body text. I can highlight it, and have it justified to the um, left, or you know, if you wanted to, you can have it centered. Wouldn't, if it's too big a text, I wouldn't have it centered with a couple, two to three lines, maybe center it, but I'd be very careful to have a larger block of text centered because it might not look so good. Okay, so I'll put those in there and that's just a bit of text underneath. Now, if we take this back out um, here, like that, you'll see how that's panning out. And what I can do now is command semicolon or control semicolon on a PC. And if I turn off the grid guide or grid overlay, um, you'll see how that's sort of panning out on that section. Right, okay, I'll turn those back on and then turn on the um, guides. Now, 
The final section will just be a futter, but you could go on doing this exercise, practicing and adding other sort of mock-ups and sections throughout here. I'm just going to put an image down the bottom and I'm going to do a different overlay this time to do with the image. You won't be doing the, um, the layer style overlay. I'll just be using the shape and changing um, the opacity in the layers. So I need to insert an image. Um, we've looked at this before in other screencasts. You can go file open and drag and drop it or you can place embedded, which will just plonk it on the file in there, or you can place it so it's linked to an external file, um, similar to how you would work in InDesign, um, where you have external files that you can update outside of it and it'll update into it. I'll just play. Okay, uh, once I've done that, I've got this image that I've called City Footer Image, which I've selected for that, and I'm going to click on um, Place. That brings it in and it's put it right up at the top here, so the first thing I'm going to do is drag it down. Uh, I'll just have to click the commit button, oops, and then just drag it down. I'll just drag it down right to the bottom. And with that highlighted, I will go up here in the uh, options on the layer and say new group from layers. And I'm going to call this footer to keep it organized. And I'll put it in a footer folder. And here it is, and I'll click on it. And all I need to do is make sure I've got the move tool is move whoops uh, make sure I've got the move tool move this down and put it in position I might want to sort of pull it down so it's going off the page a bit and this is going to be just my last section now with my properties if I go up here I've got this selected my properties say this is 1020 now I've scaled it and put it to the size I want it to be okay now I've scaled it I can take a look at the properties again properties are up here we go to the window menu and you can say properties it's saying the size is 10 21 and the height is 6 8 8 so I'm going to make um, a shape and that's going to go at the back and I'm going to turn the opacity down of this layer now sometimes what you can do is increase this, change it around to do with make it more vibrant and change it around. There's different techniques you can use, but I'm just going to put this shape on. So what I will do, I'll just click away anywhere to deselect. And if I now um, go to the shapes and I go to rectangle, I'm going to go for the fill's going to be a uh, black. Um, sorry, no, the fill's going to be the orange color so I can, um, select the orange color up here which is the one we've got we have been using or it's a foreground color now once I've got that I can just um, click on my make sure I've got my um, footer layer selected there and again I make sure you know I've got the rectangle either rounded one there all I do is I click and I'm going to make it those dimensions so I'm going to make the width um, 10 21 by 688 and when I click OK it gives me that shape it sort of pushed it up a little bit there so all I do is I just move it down so it's in contact with that now over here and uh, you'll see in the layers I'm going to call it back um, ground um, footer now that will just help to let me know because I have different backgrounds. Now what I need to do once I've done that is just drag that down so it's underneath the actual footer image. So there I switch that off and on and it's underneath it. Now back at the footer image I select that, make sure it's back on. What I can do here is go to the opacity and I can take the opacity down. Now as I take the opacity down somewhere between um, you know 20 and 15 you'll see it will take that down and put it on there. I'm happy with that I have that so we can change that around it's just a different way of doing an overlay now it is the case that you can have a different effect if I did this with black and click it on there again I need to probably take the opacity up a little bit more and you do that and you come up now you might find this is a you know a technique that you see quite a lot where they've darkened an image down you can actually change um, the exposure on the actual image to get different effects but again this is quite a, a sort of common um, way of working a common effect that is used now I'll just go to the histories and I'll just go back um, a few stages where I was before okay so we've got that and that's all set up 
Now what you would do is you would come in here and you would add other elements on the footer to give footer information. Um, if you wanted you know, copyright, different contacts, site, site map, all the different things that would be in a footer and you can play around just adding that information on top in this folder. Okay, that concludes our mock-up. So what I'll do is down in the uh, layers, I'll just turn off the grid overlay. I can go to the view menu and go down to show and I can turn off guides or I can press on an Apple um, command semicolon or control semicolon on a PC and that will turn off the guides so we can see um, our design in all its glory. So if we come up here, um, we've got our layout all structured on here. Now what you can do is this can be extracted so you can extract the components using the extract function within Adobe Photoshop and that will break up all the different components. Also it has a function that you can import it through if you're just going to hand code this up in brackets. It has a, um, a bit of a, a link up between the extract function here and opening up in black brackets you've got a plug-in um, or you know you can just do these um, as pure concepts that you can upload and put on something like Behance or you can put in folios and work or just try out layouts um, and see how they work there are lots of other programs that also you can use certainly it's sketch 3 is another one um, for doing layouts but this is just a way you can do a mock-up and a concept within Photoshop Bearing in mind, organization of your layers is really important. Putting them in um, these um, layer groups or folders. Also trying to emulate a sort of a semantic outline structure that you do have in um, HTML5 layout and markup.